Hello children, welcome to Diksha online program. In the crash course program, today we are going to discuss very, very interesting and important topics in inorganic chemistry, D block, F block, metallurgy with one physical concept of surface chemistry. What is important in this? These are the most important lessons as per theoretical part is concerned and more weightage part is concerned. Easy to score in the examinations, easy to get marks in the examinations. So why to waste our time? Let us start our journey with the D block and F block elements. What are D block elements? D block elements are those elements in which the differentiating electron enters into the penultimate shell P orbitals where these are also called as transition elements. Transition elements may be broadly defined as those with either the elements or the ions have partially filled D subshells. In case the D subshell is partly filled, the elements are called D block elements. And in D block elements, the incomplete subshells are N minus 1 D subshells. So when you go for the electronic configurations of these particular one, you will be seeing the electronic configuration N minus 1 D, Z 1 2, N minus 1 D 1 2 10, N S 0 to 1. This is going to be the electronic configurations of the D block elements where you can have even 0 to 2, 0 to 2, n minus 1 D, 1 to 10. This is electronic configuration. The elements of group 12, if you see zinc, cadmium, mercury, they have completely filled n minus 1 D subshell. In the elementary form, if you take, or even in the combined form, let us take example Zn2 plus, cadmium 2 plus, mercury 2 plus. It doesn't matter whether it is in the combined form or in the elementary form. It always have the completely filled D configuration which makes it only a D block element. They are considered as only D block but not a transition elements. So this is very important. They are not considered as transition elements. That is going to the very important point in 12th group. Coming to the elements of group 3, scandium, yttrium, lanthanum and actium differ markedly in their properties from that of other transition elements. Their compounds are uniformly trivalent, diamagnetic. So this is very important point. They all exist only in the form of trivalent and they all are diamagnetic and even colorless. They don't have any color. They don't exhibit any color. Colorless. So now where all of the typical transition elements, they show variable oxidation states, they show color exhibiting property, they are paramagnetic in nature, where scandium 3 plus, yttrium 3 plus, lanthanum 3 plus, actinium 3 plus, these particular one will be colorless, diamagnetic and they are trivalent in nature. That is very important point to note here. The electronic configuration as I have taken, the general electronic configuration N minus 1D 1 to 10, NS 1 to 2, in some of the exceptional cases, even that NS can come to 0, particularly like palladium, it will show pseudo inert gas configuration in the ground state itself. Okay, oxidation state, what is that we can learn from this particular one? We know the NS orbitals and N minus 1D orbitals, which are the valence shell as per the transition elements they have very less energy difference between them. So very small difference in energy makes the both the electrons of these two orbitals to participate in chemical bond formation and therefore they exhibit variable oxidation states. So that is the major point. They exhibit variable oxidation states is because of small difference in the energies between NS orbitals and N minus 1D orbitals. That's very key as per the conceptual questions is concerned. Now, what is the major important points in the total periodic table to take? Which transition elements exhibit highest oxidation state? Yes, the answer is here. Ruthenium shows plus 8 oxidation state. Osmium shows plus 8 oxidation state. In this particular type of compounds, RuO4, ruthenium tetroxide, osmium tetroxide, these are the compounds in which they show plus 8. And manganese is the only 3D series element which can show maximum oxidation state. This is very key point. Remember, many times in JE also they have asked, NEAT also they have asked. 
the element, the only element in 3D series shows the highest oxidation state is manganese. What is that oxidation state? Plus 7 oxidation state. It is to be noted that Cu plus ion with theta configuration is less stable than Cu2 plus ion with D9 configuration. You should understand this. This is not in the isolated form. It is in aqueous solutions. Cu plus ion is less stable than Cu plus 2 ion, particularly mentioning aqueous medium. This is because of high hydration energy corresponding to hydration energy corresponding to Cu2 plus ions. This is because of high hydration energy corresponding to Cu2 plus. Moving to the other special characteristic properties of transition elements. We have seen variable oxidation states. We have seen now the second one we are going is complex forming ability. How do transition elements show this property of complex forming ability? This is because of small size of cations, high effect to nuclear charge, the maximum magnitude of positive charge acquired on the species, presence of vacant inner d orbitals. These are ready to accommodate these are ready to accept lone pair of electrons, accept lone pairs from ligands. So this is the property which makes them to behave as a Lewis acids in the complex forming ability. The weak basic ligands, the very important point, every competitive examination has such questions. Whenever you see these CO, carbonyls, nitrosyls, C2H4, etc. form complexes only when transition metals are in zero or lowest oxidation states. So that means if you see the lowest oxidation states the transition elements can exhibit is zero can also be possible remember the compound formation can be possible complex formation can be possible even in the zero oxidation state and that is particularly you can see in case of carbonyls example like FeCO5, iron pentacarbonyl, nickel tetracarbonyl in all these, the metal is zero oxidation states. That is the major important points. Again, coming to the next point, in each transition series, the stability of complexes increases with increasing atomic number. So with increasing atomic number, complex stability is increasing, stability of complexes increases. In particular, oxidation state, decreasing size of its atoms that means if you take size into consideration if size is decreasing stability is increasing when you see comparatively same oxidation state is there when two complex uh, metal ions are there with same oxidation state see the size now whose size is small will form stable complex if we have difference in the oxidation states what is the simple logic to find if you have different oxidation state the one with more oxidation highest oxidation state will form the stable complex when metals are in different oxidation states example if i am taking fe2 plus fe3 plus fe3 plus forms the stable complex than fe2 plus so difference in oxidation states higher oxidation state will always form the stable complex color exhibiting property the next property color exhibiting property when you take the color exhibiting property presence of unpaired electron is must if there is no unpaired electron, no unpaired electron, they are colorless. So scandium 3 plus, titanium plus 4, Cu plus, zinc 2 plus. The first two compounds will have D0 configuration. The next two compounds will have D10 configuration. No unpaired electrons, so they are colorless. But if you see, the color of transition metal ions is due to presence of unpaired electrons or incomplete d orbitals. If you have other than scandium and zinc in the uh, Cu plus in uh, 3D series, all the other ions of 3D series will exhibit color. This is because of DD transitions, inner DD transitions, which will be learning in coordination complexes, splitting of degeneracy and therefore the two d orbitals, T2G and DG, energy excitations and de-excitations leads to the color exhibiting property which takes place in the visible region. That is the major key and very important to this, what is the complementary color? Complementary colors is also been uh, shown to you right now here. This is the complementary color one. So, color wheel will give you the answer for this particular one. I have shown you the color wheel. If you see the violet color, the complementary color will be yellow. Violet corresponds to yellow. If you see the blue color, blue color, what is the complementary color? Is orange. 
and red color complementary color for the red color is green complementary color for yellow color is violet orange color is blue and then the red color is green so this is the co color wheel if you can remember this way simple in examinations you can answer the questions very easily let us go to the next slide magnetic property wow we have seen the color exhibiting properties basically two points before we come to this particular one again i have one exception to explain you there are some exceptions like cr2 o7 2 minus cr04 2 minus mn04 minus these are the species where you can see they have no valence no unpaired electrons even though they have no unpaired electrons they exhibit color and what is the reason for this particular phenomena is due to charge transfer phenomena so this is very 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 important point please remember charge transfer phenomena due to charge transfer phenomena these particular species like dichromate chromate and permanganate they exhibit color even though they don't have any unpaid electrons in their valence shell and that is due to charge transfer phenomena an exceptional point to learn coming back to the magnetic properties here also the magnetic properties are classified into three types paramagnetic diamagnetic ferromagnetic paramagnetic are those substances which are weakly attracted in magnetic field they are called paramagnetic substances and this is due to the presence of unpaired electrons and the total magnetic moment of cation depends depends on number of unpaired electrons and magnetic moment is calculated with the formula mu is equals to root over n into n plus 2 bore magnetons where n stands for number of unpaid electrons you will be finding out the questions repeatedly coming in the examinations particularly on this particular formula magnetic moment calculation mu is equals to root over n into n plus 2 bore magnetons and that is very important concept just recap this concept again come back you will be answering easily questions in examinations coming to the continuation of it what are ferromagnetic substances iron cobalt nickel are the best examples of ferromagnetic materials which have permanent magnetism acquired even in the absence of magnetic field removing the magnetic field still they maintain permanent magnetism so that is better where you can see a very strong attraction towards the external magnetic field shown by ferromagnetic materials so the examples iron cobalt nickel cro2 those all comes under the examples of ferromagnetic materials what is special about diamagnetic diamagnetic materials are repelled by magnetic field weakly attracted para strongly attracted ferro repelled by the magnetic weakly repelled by magnetic field is diamagnetic substances all those species where either you have d0 configuration or you have d10 configuration they come under this category with no unpaired electrons which does not contain any unpaired electrons they will be diamagnetic in nature and what is important applicative part applicative part is very important the diamagnetic substances when they are placed in the magnetic field when they are placed in external magnetic field you will see a decrease in the weight whereas when you place a paramagnetic substance in magnetic field you will see an increase in the weight and that is the very very important point you should be careful this can confuse you and these are the questions where you can expect in the examinations non stoichiometric compounds this is a special property shown by transition elements transition elements form compounds of indefinite structure and composition with group 16 elements like oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium with 16th group elements they form indefinite structural compounds and indefinite compositional compounds those compounds are called non stoichiometric compounds and generally one example if you take feo is an example but if i write just feo it is wrong i should write feo with a bar on it it should be written bar over the formula what is this bar indicates indicates iron and oxygen is not in one is to one ratio this is not in one is to one ratio it is actually in between like you can see fe1 0.94 oxygen fe1 0.84 it can vary in between it's a fractional value of oxygen not the integral value of oxygen so it is indicating that bar indicates it's not a stoichiometric compound it's a non stoichiometric compound activity of metals when you talk about activity 
when a reactivity metals will be more reactive when they are least reactive if you observe this activity in terms of transition elements the high heats of sublimation high ionization potentials and low heats of hydration of ions general categories we are not talking about individual elements generalized one you will see high hydration or sorry high sublimation energy and this is due to existence of covalent bonds you can see more number of unpaired d electrons are there more strongly they will be bonded so high atomization will be there high sublimation will be there ionization energies are high but heat of hydration is low the first two are endothermic process the last one is exothermic process because endothermic is stronger than exothermic in most of the cases you can see most of the metals will remain unreactive or noble in the chemical reactions is concerned while a trans within a transition series the noble character reactivity unreactive nature noble character increases with increase in atomic number remember this point very very important so if you see example if i am taking chromium to molybdenum molybdenum to tungsten if i am moving from top to bottom same plus 6 oxidation state chromium is the strongest oxidizing agent where molybdenum and tungsten in the same plus 6 remains unreactive they will be the most inert substances so the reactivity is decreasing very 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 important point all transition elements except copper and mercury if you observe this particular one copper silver mercury these particular one they have the oxidation potentials higher than the hydrogen electrode hence these metals except copper mercury are good reducing agents even silver platinum these all will come the other metals other than this you can see in electrochemistry electrochemical series this is a clear impact coming to catalytic properties of the transition elements various transition elements and their compounds acts as catalysts examples you can see iron platinum palladium nickel v2o5 commonly we see in the industrial preparation these all catalysts in some cases the transition elements provide unpa unpaired d electrons to form unstable intermediates thereby the reaction carries out and again it comes out as the same reactant how it participated in the reaction so that is where it in involved the unpaired d electrons in one case while in other the transition metals provide large surface area for adsorption of gases if you see surface area is large huge gases adsorb on surface so the chemical reaction takes place more fastly so providing unpaired electrons might be one reason providing large surface area can be one reason and very important point to note is they are resistant to corrosion with exception of certain metals mostly transition metals are resistant to corrosion but there are exceptions you can see iron undergoes rusting corrosion happens copper undergoes corrosion happens silver will undergo tarnishing happens there are some exceptions but what is one important chromium is a very important corrosion resistant metal many times in je you have seen this question i might challenge you you will have this question which is the metal which is having corrosion resistivity chromium sometimes other transition metals also do not displace hydrogen from acids it is because of their surface being covered with insoluble inert oxides you will generally have this problem you will see in the electrochemical series the metal will lie above the hydrogen will be in an impression that it can displace hydrogen very easily but when you see it doesn't do that why reason is simple because it is being covered with insoluble inert oxides and can you give one example yes here is the example remember the most common examination point of view this example cr2o3 try to remember this very very important now alloy formation when an alloy formation takes place if some metal is being displaced and the same metal position is being occupied by someone substituted with the someone if this can be possible only if the size is similar so if transition elements have quite similar atomic size so they mutually substitute one another in crystal lattices this gives solid solutions if that metal is one of the metal is mercury so those alloys are generally called as amalgams they are generally called as amalgams and the chemical properties of component what is important in alloys is the chemical properties are retained physical properties are improved this is very important chemical properties are retained so there is no change physical properties get improved so now the last and the most important from the d block elements if you see potassium dichromate preparation and properties 
Yes, everyone knows this. You have learned for your board examinations. It is being taken from chromite ore, FeCr2O4, chromite ore. Roasting in presence of sodium carbonate gives you sodium chromate. Sodium chromate is going to be your yellow color solution. In the yellow color solution, Fe2O3 is insoluble. That precipitate has been filtered, so that solution has been taken. And what is the special property about here in the preparation itself? You can learn the CrO4 a yellow color solution can inter convert into Cr2O7 an orange colored precipitate if you provide acid medium. So the inter conversion happens. But the same Cr2O7 can interchange into CrO4 if you provide OH minus basic medium. So there is an LO2 orange conversion can happen. LO2 orange conversion. How to remember this particular one? Just see here. LO in presence of H plus gives you orange. Orange in presence of OH minus gives you LO. So just remember if you are giving O H O for O. You see oxygen, oxygen. O and O is there. O means it is going to Y. LO to orange, orange to LO. LO corresponds to chromate and orange corresponds to dichromate. Just remember this and that is applied in the second step acid medium sodium dichromate is produced and further metal displacement K2Cr2O7 has been produced. This is a very familiar reaction to everyone but this is important for us. You need to remember this point the it is an equilibrium change between the two states. Now what are the oxidizing properties K2Cr2O7 remember only in acid medium K2Cr2O7 acts as oxidizing agent. In basic medium, it changes into K2CrO4, dichromate to chromate, where there is no change in oxidizing state, no oxidizing property. So, what are the common oxidizing things? It oxidizes iodides to iodine, sulfides to sulfur, tin, Sn plus 2 to Sn plus 4, and ferrous to ferric. These are the common reactions of K2CrO7. And what is going to be the major important point? The equivalent weight of K2Cr2O7 is molecular weight by 6. Is N factor for K2Cr2O7 is 6. That is going to be very, very, very crucial type of questions that can be possible on this. Coming to the structural data, you can see CrO4 2 minus chromate sp3 hybridization, tetrahedral structure tetrahedral structure and all oxygens where you take here are identical in CrO4 2 minus all are identical but when it comes to Cr2O7 dichromate here each chromin is sp3 hybridized no doubt about it each chromium is tetrahedral no doubt about it but when you see the bond length between CrO if you see this CrO bond is 1.79 Armstrongs and this CRO is 1.63. So the question that comes in the examination, how many CRO bonds are identical? Identical CRO bonds are, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, here is going to be 4, here 5, here 6. So 6, 6 of one type and 2 of one type. So there are CRO, CR bond is not identical. This bond is not identical to the remaining. So, 6 CRO bonds are identical with lowest bond length 1.63 and this CRO with highest bond length 1.79. What does this bond length indicate? Huh. Bond length is indicating this longest bond length indicates single bond character where the 1.63 Armstrong indicates double bond character for CRO. So, the double bond character is there for all the 6 identical bonds and single bond character between the two chromine oxygen bonds. So they have 126 bond angle and this data is very important as per examination point of view. KMnO4, if we come into KMnO4, it is prepared by alkaline oxidative fusion of MnO2. So first oxidation, manganese dioxide, MnO2 will oxidize to manganate ion. Manganate ion is going to be green color. This is going to be a green color liquid oily liquid and this will undergo further oxidation if it is taken in electrolytic medium converts into permanganate if it is in the neutral or acid medium undergo disproportionation basic medium undergo oxidation see the conditions in neutral or if it is acid medium manganate will undergo disproportionation to permanganate and mno2 back 
so it will be a simple thing mno2 starts comes to mno42 minus goes to mno4 minus so if you see if there is any acid medium or neutral medium again these two are going to come that's a disproportionation reaction but if it is basic medium it follows only one direction that is giving you oxidation product of permanganate and laboratory method of preparation of KMnO4 if you see it is with uh, peroxodisulfate it oxidized by peroxodisulfate Mn2 plus salts will be oxidized to corresponding MnO4 minus and peroxidisulfates are getting reduced to SO42 minus this is going to be the laboratory method of preparation of KMnO4 very 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 important physical properties if you see KMnO4 KMnO4 forms dark purple crystals the salt is not very soluble in water but when heated it decomposes at 513 Kelvin this is very important when you directly heat KMnO4 what will happen it gives you potassium manganate and MnO2 back KMnO4 does not stay as such it goes to K2MnO4 and MnO2 releasing oxygen gas many times this has been asked so stoichiometrically also you should remember this equation moving to oxidizing properties it is the strongest oxidizing agent no doubt about it when it is the strongest oxidizing agent in acid medium if you see the acid medium of that particular one the acid medium it will be converted from MnO4 minus to Mn2 plus involving five electrons involved in this so five faraday of electricity involved in basic medium it changes to MnO4 2 minus only one electron so one faraday involved in this in partly alkaline medium it changes to MnO2 changing from plus 7 to plus 4 three electrons are involved so this will be the property so remember in neutral medium it is going to give you MnO2 in acid medium it is going to give Mn2 plus in highly basic medium in highly basic medium it is going to give manganate so the equivalent weights are calculated as per that particular one so the property is also going to change as per the medium in acid solutions what are the properties commonly we observe iodide i minus will change to i2 all nitrites are 8 salts to 8 salts so no2 minus to no3 minus so32 minus to so42 minus sulfide to sulfate so32 minus to so42 minus and sulfide s2 minus to sulfur so very important ferrous to ferric green color compounds to yellow color compounds oxalates c2o42 minus ions to corresponding co2 so these are the common reactions we see in acid solutions what happens in the neutral medium or faintly alkaline medium you can see in acid medium i minus changes to which one you remember yes i2 correct i minus to i2 but in faintly alkaline or neutral you should remember this it changes to io3 minus iodic iodite iodate we can say if it is hio3 iodic acid hio3 io3 minus iodate thiosulfate s2o3 2 minus is oxidized almost to sulfate so 4 2 minus this is going to be the reaction that takes place in faintly alkaline or neutral medium coming to the most important this is very commonly asked in exam manganous salts mn2 plus salts are oxidized by mno4 minus to mno2 mno2 this is going to be the very important uh, point in the case of this one and what is very very important zinc sulfate or zno catalyzes the above reaction so whenever manganese salts are oxidized to mno2 remember what is the catalyst is the question they ask you zinc salts zinc sulfate or zinc oxide catalyzes that reaction and most important in any titrations where KMnO4 are involved never take acid medium to be maintained with HCl HCl should not be used as a acid maintaining medium or acid medium maintaining substance HCl should never be used in KMnO4 titrations because HCl gets oxidized to Cl2 yes this is the very important part. I think you are clear with this now moving to the next one structure of KMnO4 and MnO4 2 minus if you take manganate ion which is a green color one it is a tetrahedral paramagnetic permanganate ion is also purple color tetrahedral diamagnetic the only difference this is due to unpaid electron 
you have an unpaired electron but here no unpaired electrons this is no unpaired electrons even though it is having no unpaired electrons it shows color due to charge transfer phenomena i told you in the previous case so remember this green color is due to dd transitions whereas this d this color is not due to dd simple dd transitions because of unpaired electrons it is due to charge transfer phenomena between the ligand and the central metal ions now moving to the last part of the d block and f block f block elements inner transition elements which are called as f block elements why they are called inner because between two transition elements they are occupied so they are called inner to transition elements inner transition elements where the differentiating electron enters into n minus 2 f orbital that is called anti penultimate shell f orbitals so if electron enters into anti penultimate shell f orbitals they are called f block elements and here they show the property similar to transition having incompletely filled f subshell having incomplete filled f subshell electronic configuration is given with this n minus 2 f 1 2 14 n minus 1 d 0 to 1 ns 2 so very very important this is very important so what is the property 4f series 5f series there are two types of uh, f block series we have lanthanides and actinides first one the differentiating electron enters into 4f subshell they are called 4f series elements are lanthanides why they are called lanthanides because they are following the element lanthanum in d block elements so they are called lanthanides they are also called rarets rareth metals and uh, they occur very rarely in the earth crust. That is the reason why they call rare earths. Now, the size when it comes to atomic or ionic sizes, lanthanides size of the lanthanides decreases steadily with increase in atomic number because of the poor, poor, very poor shielding effect of 4F electrons, and that is called lanthanide contraction. I hope everyone is clear with this and everyone knows this concept very well. And what is the consequences because of it? You know lanthanum to lutetium the size is decreasing randomly you can see which is having within the range 106 picometers to 85 picometers so almost all are having very small decreases there but similar size is there almost similar size separation becomes difficult from their mixture that is the first consequence separation becomes difficult second their electronegativity will have decrease in the electronegativity is very very small and their reduction potentials are comparable to that of alkaline earth metals very reactive so the reactivity is very high and uh, the basic character the very 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 important point the basic character of oxides and hydroxides depends on size since left that is lanthanum to lutetium size decreases these characters also decreases from lanthanum to lutetium the very important point and mostly asked in the examination competitive examinations this point coming to the next one due to lanthanide contraction atomic radii of the corresponding elements in 4d and 5d series are similar we can see three series of uh, elements will come in this particular one zirconium half neum niobium tantalum and molybdenum tungsten they show similar atomic radius this is also one of the consequences many times they ask you an exam which of the following pair of elements show are the consequences of lanthanide contraction remember the three series zirconium havium niobium tantalum molybdenum tungsten coming to oxidation states the most common oxidation states of lanthanides is how much plus three but there are exceptions there are some elements which can also show plus four like prosodium, cerium, terbium, dysprosium, they show plus four. Similarly, there are some elements which show plus two, samarium, europium, terb, tulinum and iterbium, they show plus two. Either to satisfy D0, uh, F0 configuration or to satisfy F14 or to satisfy F7, half filled or completely filled or no electrons, they wanted to get this particular oxidation state to be accepted plus four plus two oxidation states can be exhibited by some elements but what is important these elements have to attain plus three because the common and the most stable is plus three so moving from plus four to plus three is reduction so they undergo reduction undergoing reduction they act as oxidizing agents moving from plus two to plus three they undergo oxidation so they act as reducing agents 
so all plus 4 oxidizing agent oxidizing states shown elements they act as oxidizing agents all plus 2 plus 2 oxidation state shown elements will behave as reducing agents then who is the strongest among the species which is shown on you on the screen let us see that this is very important among the plus 4 oxidation state shown by the lanthanides cerium plus 4 is the strongest oxidizing agent and among the plus 2 oxidation states europium plus 2 is the strongest reducing agent so this is common remaining all also will show the property of oxidizing and reducing but the strongest will be these so coming to the next one general characteristics of lanthanides they're soft metals silvery white color they tarnish rapidly in air increase in atomic number increases the hardness of these metals because the number of bonds formed will be increasing hardness will increase and what is very 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 important to know the melting points of lanthanides ranges between 1000 to 1200 and the exception this is commonly shown by that alkaline earth metals they are mostly matching to the alkaline earth metals where samarium will be showing an exceptionally hard or highest melting point of 16 23 kelvin the values are very important try to remember that helps you in examinations coming to the most common characteristics all are trivalent all have unpaired electrons except f0 and f14 configurational species all shows trivalent species with unpaired electrons so they are color exhibiting properties shown by them they show color exhibiting property and this color exhibiting property is due to ff transitions and because of the unpaired electrons they show paramagnetic nature and who does not have unpaired electrons will not have color exhibiting but what is important the substance whose electronic configuration in lanthanides exhibiting plus 3 config oxidation states if a substance has fn electronic configuration it shows same color with f14 minus n configuration of element which is another element which is in the same plus 3 oxidation state another lanthanum with plus 3 oxidation state so these two elements will show the same color so better suggestion is learn the elements starting from cerium to lutetium so keep them in order so that you can easily answer such type of questions which element shows same color so the element with fn shows same color with f14 minus n configuration coming to chemical reactivity you can see the lanthanide metals they show similarity with the alkaline earth metals so the reactivity is similar to alkaline earth metals but the reaction product resembles similar to aluminium better to see the products like aluminium you can easily remember so since it is reactivity similar to alkaline earth metals they can easily displace hydrogen from the dilute acids that is going to be very 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 common reaction so the reaction with sulfur forms corresponding m2s3 type of product similar to aluminium type product liberates hydrogen with dilute acids forms mx3 type of product with halogens hydroxides and releases hydrogen gas from water carbides it forms mc2 with nitrogen it forms mn it oxides it forms m2o3 type of products you can see the comparison with aluminium the products uh, formula resembles aluminium but the product reactivities are similar to alkaline earth metals so the most important uses when you learn about lanthanides is the misc metal this is the word which is commonly asked in the examinations uh, a well-known alloy is misc metal which consists of lanthanide metal which is 95 percent approximately present in it and the trace amounts we have iron traces of sulfur carbon calcium aluminium these all will be trace amounts where do we use this it is used in gas lighters flame throwing tanks toys tank tracer bullets these all are the some of the major important uses but misc metal the composition very important learn the composition coming to actinides what is special about actinides actinides are the elements in which differentiating electron enters into 5f subshell anti penultimate shell similar like lanthanides 5f subshell all actinides are radioactive this is very important but in uh, except promethium all are non radioactive in lanthanides but in all act all actinides are radioactive but in this also after uranium all are synthetic and radioactive so they are called transuranic elements general formula 5f1214 6d0 to 1 7s2 this is general electronic configuration of actinides 
so the ionic size is similar lanthanide contraction here actinide contraction so the increase in atomic number decreases the size across the actinides so this is similar to that of the lanthanide contraction but what is important actinides show a variety range of oxidation states where lanthanides show are fixed to plus 3 it shows variety of oxidation states and this is because of the comparable energies of 5f 6d and 7s orbitals and what is a special characteristics if you see in the actinides they can form complex forming ability they have they also shows the reactivities very easily they show predominant actinide contraction than the lanthanide contractions some of the uh, similarities and dissimilarities if you compare this is going to be this so collectively we are uh, we have completed the concept of d block and f block i hope we have done the job for this particular one let us move to the next lesson metallurgy what is metallurgy the process used for isolation of metals from its ores is called metallurgy naturally occurring uh, compounds of metals in earth crust which are obtained by mining that means whichever is available in earth crust in the combined form that is mineral but can we extract metal from every compound form no we need a profitable extraction remember the word profitable extraction so where do we get that particular one the minerals which are used for extraction of metals profitable extraction of metals they are called ores now our job is not to extract metal from any compound available only from the ores every ore is a mineral but not every mineral can be an ore because we cannot say every time we get a profitable extraction so how do we go forward the elements which we have extracted from the earth crust it will be collectively having all the dust particles siliceous uh, impurities which are present in the earth this all will be surrounding the ore particles so the unwanted impurities which are present in the ore are called gang or matrix so mud stone sand these all comes under the examples of those coming to the extraction procedure if you see the extraction procedure it follows the following steps step one concentration of the ore which is also called pre-treatment there will be some extra work should be done to remove the impurities isolation of the metal from its concentrated ore crude metal has to be extracted from the ore and purification of the metal refining of the crude metal that is the three steps so the total process involves this so let us start with the first one what is concentration of the ore concentration of the ore can be done in four ways so the process of concentration means it is removal of unwanted materials like all the earthly impurities siliceous impurities are to be removed and that process is called concentration which is also called as dressing of the ore benefaction of the ore so this is other names of the compounds now what are the different types gravity separation so depending on the density so we will be using the density as the principle separation can be done basing on that and flushing with the water less dense particles will be collected with the water and the high density particles will remain on the wheel flat tables that is the method the magnetic separation will be having a roller on which one of the one side of the roller will have a wheel which is not made of non-magnetic material the other side will be made of magnetic material when the particles are made to move they will be separated because the magnetic materials will be sticking to the roller still and the non-magnetic materials with the force will be displayed or they, uh, we can say they have been thrown away so there will be two different places you can see the uh, uh, the material have been separated or segregated and that is how we will separate by magnetic separation method froth flotation process majorly works on the wetting nature difference in the wetting nature of uh, ore with respect to oil and water always what we'll do we'll take the frothing agent we'll have the froth stabilizers we also have the collectors the collectors will do the job take the ore selectively into the oil and make sure the impurities are left in the water so the separation will be done by the collectors and the froth will carry away these particular particles and that will be skimmed off of that particular vessel and that is how we'll do so we have leaching process leaching process is cleaning or washing of the substance with suitable solvents that can be done by a suitable leaching agents where we'll be using particularly the most common leaching will be observed in the metallurgy in case of aluminium bayes process hall's process we'll be seeing the bleaching uh, sorry the uh, leaching process is observed in in the case of aluminium and second one in the cyanide process in case of extraction of silver or gold we use this particular one cyanide process also coming to extraction of crude metal from the concentrated ore two steps are involved in that particular one conversion of oxide 
calcination and roasting process conversion to oxide calcination process roasting process what is calcination process of heating the ore this is very important below the melting point that means the solid should not convert into liquid during the calcination in the absence of air if you are doing this heating process it is calcination so mostly this is observed for the carbonates bicarbonates and uh, oxides or uh, hydrated oxides we use this particular concept of calcination process roasting process it is the process of heating the ore below its melting point again they are not changing the physical state without changing the physical state decomposing the substance in the air it is called roasting process oxidation takes place during roasting so if you take a zinc sulfide it will be converted into zinc oxide so the oxidation takes place in the process of roasting process so mostly the sulfide ores will be undergoing the roasting process in the same way sulfide ores will be undergoing froth flotation process froth flotation process is most common for sulfide ores pine oil is used as the fruiting agent and we have aniline that can be using as fruit stabilizers and we have the collectors xanthates xanthates will be used as the collectors that is the process in the reduction of oxide to the metal pyrometallurgy if you talk about pyrometallurgy pyro means heating metallurgy heating is involved in presence of some reducing agent so in a process in which concentrated ores are reduced from crude metals at high temperatures they are called pyrometallurgical process smelting process this is a you can see s melting i can say s melting smelting so when you talk about this particular one melting is compulsorily that means the physical state change is compulsorily involved in the process in the process extraction of impure molten metal see this particular one molten metal from its ore at high temperature using suitable flux and reducing agent remember your ore should be compulsory flux is compulsory and reducing agent is compulsory if you have these three then we say there is a smelting process compulsory three components should be there and you will be getting the ore in the molten form either you get the ore in the molten form or you get the crude metal in the molten form that is the specialty of smelting process and what is happening the role of flux what is the flux here the substance which has impurity which is present in the ore will be reacted with the flux gives you slag impurity present in the ore reacts with the flux gives you slag the easily fusible form of the substance that is called as slag thermodynamical principle ellingham diagrams we say what is the important point whenever you see this particular diagram given what is the key point c two lines given to you x y if you take the one which is a below so whichever is in the below will be the strongest reducing agent this will be the strong reducing agent and who can reduce all the elements which lie above it so y can reduce x x cannot reduce y so whose selection of reducing agent can be done with respect to ellingham diagrams and that is what is been approached with this particular one you can see uh, the graphically if any question has been asked we have to approach in this way and who can give you delta g negative ultimate reaction whose delta g value is negative that will be more spontaneous process blast furnace this is the outline structure of blast furnace if you see in this you can see moving from top to bottom what is the first point temperature increases and in the top where temperature is below 1000 kelvin you can see carbon monoxide acts as reducing agent and the temperature above 1000 kelvin carbon becomes the reducing agent this is the major role in this particular one co and c acting as a reducing agent in the process where you can see in the blast furnace your cao caco3 is giving you on dissociation gives you cao plus co2 this is going to act as a flux will react with sio2 to form slag casio3 this is going to be the slag that is formed in the process of extraction of iron so most commonly that questions will be coming what is the molten form of iron that is coming over here is the pig iron and which can be casted into cast iron later so the difference in the different forms of iron is the percentage of impurity of carbon will be the difference which will decide which part of iron which type of iron is present in that particular species pyrometallurgy it is for the extraction if you go with the another one that is copper extraction of copper 
extraction of copper can be done in two ways one is by going with the uh, normal smelting and Bessemer converter process or going with the uh, heating in terms of carbon by Ellingham diagrams using the help of Ellingham diagrams so pyrometallurgy if you go with pyrometallurgy Cu2O can be reduced to carbon directly with the carbon access reducing agent this can be one process or if you go with the roasting process Cu2S will undergo partial roasting why because copper has more affinity with sulfur where iron has more affinity with oxygen so there is always uh, copper undergoing a partial roasting not complete roasting so you'll have a cu2o in a large uh, small quantity formed which will be again exchanging with iron so there will be a little bit cu2s plus little fes will be left out where feo formed in the process will be removed immediately in the form of slag formation so the slag formation removes whatever FeO is formed then and there itself. So there will be a large amounts of uh, Cu2S with little FeS formation that is called as copper matty. So this is taken as copper matty. And now this copper matty will further undergo roasting process or uh, oxidation which undergoes self oxidation or auto, auto reduction we say sorry auto reduction process where Cu2S will be oxidized to Cu2O. And the Cu2 and Cu2S will undergo auto reduction to give metallic copper or the, uh, the crude metal copper where this copper will be releasing sulfur dioxide from the surface since the sulfur dioxide is being released out from the surface leaving behind some holes on the surface we call those holes as blisters we say that copper is called as blister copper so the blisters are appeared on the surface which makes the copper as blister copper extraction of zinc from zinc oxide if you take zinc oxide bell we can say this is the process belgian process we call zinc oxide can be reduced to zinc in presence of coke exceeding nearly 1400 kelvin so 1673 kelvin minimum 1400 kelvin has to be exceeded below that reaction does not take place and that is the specialty of this the metal is distilled and collected by rapid chilling the process of extraction of metals by electrolysis is electrometallurgy where do we see electrometallurgy and this is applicable only for the highly react to metals like highly electropositive metals like alkali metals alkaline metals aluminium and one such example extraction of aluminium from alumina after the leaching process alumina is further extracted from alumina to aluminium this is by hall herald process in this we are taking the mixture of alumina with cryolite cryolite will decrease the melting point increase the conductivity so the role of that particular one with alumina is a bad conductor of electricity to increase the conductivity cryolite is using aluminium the cathode reactions you can see aluminium gets reduced to al at anode reaction you can see the release of co and co2 ultimately we can say that co is further converted into co2 further oxidation you can see the overall reaction al2o3 will be reduced to al giving you carbon dioxide this is hard herald process they ask you in examinations reactions corresponding to cathode and anode please be aware c1 co2 mixture can be possible hydrometallurgy what do you mean by hydrometallurgy hydrometallurgy means displacing less electropositive metal from by high electropositive metal from its salt solution this type of reactions are hydrometallurgy so copper is extracted by such type of hydrometallurgy when you are extracting copper from low grade ores or scraps remember normal copper extraction is different from low grade ores or scraps the pin spill in normal copper the copper sulfide ore or copper pyrates we are applying uh, the pyrometallurgy principle but when you are taking from low grade ores or scraps hydrometallurgy is involved in this particular case so hydrometallurgy is a process of extraction which converting the ores into aqueous solutions of metal compounds and the reduction of these compounds using suitable reducing agents so displacing in simple way displacement of one by another element which is by your activity series that can be done now this can also be applied continued hydrometallurgy can also be observed in the case of cyanide process gold and silver extractions if you see where you can see the same role zinc plays here the role of zinc will display silver or gold from the complex and forms corresponding soluble zinc complex and the gold and silver can be extracted in the pure form by cyanide process this is the leaching process MacArthur cyanide process we can say that process we are using this 
coming to refining of metals there are different process which are involved in refining distillation process difference in the boiling points of the two liquids liquidation process difference in the melting points is applied for this particular one electrolysis are electroplating active electrodes are used using the active electrodes we are going to separate this particular one active electrodes electro refining particularly zone refining vapor phase refining and chromatography the most important among these is electrolysis zone refining and vapor phase refining if you see in this particular one electrolytic refining i have said it is in presence of active electrode a metal immersed in its own metal solution same metal solution is taken if you have a metal and its own metal ion solution then it is called active electrodes in case of active electrodes there is no role of anions in electrolysis so first point no role of anions so the metal will undergo oxidation at anode and the impurities will come as anode mud anode mud is formed as impurities that separate separate down at the bottom and cathode the metal ion from the solution will get extracted as pure metal at cathode so this is how we will extract the pure metals at cathode by reaction of electro refining process zone refining the method is based on the principle that impurities are more soluble in molten state of the metal than in its solid state that is the principle involved in the zone refining process particularly this is used for semiconductors remember 14th group elements semiconductors will be extracted by zone refining process very important to understand vapor phase refining is done by mons process where nickel is the reagent used in the mons process van arkel process where iodine is used as the uh, reagent in this particular one so this is a uh, iodine is the reagent and this is for zirconium and uh, titanium nickel is used where carbon monoxide is the reagent so here the reagent is iodine here the reagent is carbon monoxide nickel is extracted zirconium and titanium is extracted by van arkel method what is mons process we can see impure nickel is converted into its vapor compound and in the vapor phase it is refined to a pure nickel and it is been condensed back into the solid form so this is carbon monoxide will do this particular job so this is refining of nickel by mons process same way if you take zirconium and titanium can be extracted by van arkel method in which iodine will do the same type of process take it into vapor phase refining will happen in the vapor phase pure zirconium comes from that particular one difference in the temperatures that will be done so this is the van arkel process moving to the last topic surface chemistry what is surface chemistry it is a branch of physical chemistry which deals with the phenomena that occurs at the surface or interface any chemical interaction that takes place on surface or interface is called surface chemistry so now what are the phenomena we are going to see under this is adsorption phenomena catalysis and collides three different cases we are going to learn in this concept of surface chemistry what is adsorption adsorption is the phenomena in which molecules accumulate on the surface without itself going into the bulk so meaning of bulk going into the deeper layers of the medium no it remains only on the surface so the interface at the surface of the substance if the molecules take part in a chemical change that is adsorption phenomena the substance which gets adsorbed remember this is very important substance which adsorbed is known as adsorbate and the substance on which adsorption takes place on which adsorption takes place is adsorbent so if you take a substance on which adsorption is happening this is going to be the adsorbent i'll take the bent and the particles which are coming are called as baits adsorbates so adsorbate adsorbent the condition who is the medium bent on which the adsorption takes place by adsorbate so differences between physical and chemical adsorptions the name itself says physical so the forces are natural forces are physical forces but if you say chemical some chemical interaction ionic or covalent remember chemical can be ionic chemical can be covalent no matter any chemical bond is a chemical adsorption so physical is van der waals forces if the adsorption takes place due to van der waals forces it's physical adsorption 
if it is due to a chemical bond it can be an ionic bond or covalent bond then it is taken as chemical adsorption physical adsorption adsorption can be between any two species because van der waals forces can operate in any one that's why three physical states are existing so it is not specific very specific you cannot form covalent bond or ionic bond with any one so that is specific case highly specific chemical adsorption who is reversible is physical adsorption is reversible you can break and you can reform it with any species but you cannot do that with chemical adsorption so it is irreversible in nature moving to physical adsorption increases with increase in pressure and decreases on decreasing the pressure so pressure and effect effect with pressure it goes on increases or decreases whatever the pressure change the same relation with this but if you see in the case of chemical adsorption increases initially and then remains constant after reaching an optimum conditions that is chemical adsorption heat of adsorption is low heat of adsorption is high nearly minus 20 to minus 40 where it is 80 to minus 82 minus 240 kilojoule per mole is chemical adsorption multi-layered adsorption is a physical adsorption unilayered adsorption is chemical adsorption so physical and chemical layer wise also it is important multi-layered is physical unilayered is chemical friendly adsorption isotherm if you take Friendlich gave, gave a mathematical relationship between quantity of gas adsorbed per unit mass of adsorbent and the pressure at a given temperature and his relation is x by m is equals to k into p power 1 by n you can see as temperature is decreasing temperature is less as temperature is decreasing moving top to bottom if you go temperature is decreasing adsorption is increasing so the adsorption is increasing as temperature is decreasing that is the major key part in this so it is inversely proportional to temperature taking logarithm of the above equation both sides will get this particular one it is similar to y is equals to c plus mx mx plus c where m will be slope will be 1 by n and intercept c will be c will be log k c will be log k so the intercept is log k and slope is equals to 1 by n and very important for numerical approach this question is very important now catalysis what is catalysis any chemical reaction that takes place in presence of catalyst is a catalysis reaction then what is a catalyst a catalyst is a substance which increases the rate of reaction but itself does not undergo any chemical change at the end of the reaction the phenomena in which a catalyst increases the rate of reaction is known as catalysis reaction so any reaction involving the presence of catalyst it is catalysis reaction so the we are only concerned with positive catalyst not concerned with negative so our role is role of catalyst is to increase the rate of a chemical reaction how many different types we can classify the catalysis reactions yes two types i think everyone knows this homogeneous and heterogeneous homo stands for same genus stands for physical state so if i am writing an equation like 2so2 plus o2 gives rise to 2so3 in this particular reaction so2 is a gas o2 is a gas if i am taking no as the catalyst no is a gas i am not concerned about the react product in this case all your reactants and catalyst are in the same physical state homogeneous but if I write the same equation 2SO2 plus O2 gives rise to 2SO3, if I am taking V2O5 as a catalyst, SO2 is gas, O2 is gas, V2O5 is solid. Now you see the difference in the physical state. This leads to heterogeneous catalysis reactions. So homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis reactions are given in this way. Moving to the next one, shape select to catalysis. And very important, I think in your board exam also you have come across this. What is the role of this? The catalytic reactions which depends on pore structure of catalyst. Please don't confuse here. Pore structure of catalyst, size of reactant molecules. This is the confusing part. Every time students do the mistake in the competitive examinations. Pore structure is concerned to catalyst. Size is concerned to reactant molecule then that type of catalysis reactions are shape selecto catalysis reactions and the very best example everyone knows zsm5 it is going to be the most important one zsm5 is the catalyst one example for dehydration of alcohols this is a particularly for dehydration of alcohols this is applicable correct okay moving to enzyme catalysis biocatalyst 
enzyme catalysis reactions what are enzyme catalysis reactions enzymes are proteins produced by plants and animals these are colloidal in nature and which can act as catalysts for biochemical reactions these are also known as biocatalysts bio means living organisms which are playing a key role in living organisms those all process and where they act as catalysts in biological reactions they are called biocatalysts characteristics very important very high efficiency nearly you can see 10 power 8 reactions can take place per minute that much the collisions can happen that many reactions can happen per minute high specificity one substance one enzyme can carry only one type of reaction cannot involve in second type of reactions at all like enzyme if you take zymase it is only the role of zymase is to convert the glucose of fructose to ethyl alcohol that's it it does not have any other role to do it is optimum highly active at optimum temperature body conditions room temperatures and then at a ph conditions 5 to 7 at the approximately there activators are coenzymes all the metal ions act as activators coenzymes vitamins will act as the activators or coenzymes uh, they increase the activity of enzyme vitamins or minerals metal ions those all uh, inhibitors or poisons are drugs drugs will act as the inhibitors they deactivate the catalyst so they decrease the activity of the enzymes drugs are most commonly used as the inhibitors or poisons collides the last part of the surface chemistry it is a state of matter in which particle size lies between 1 to 100 nanometers 1 to 100 nanometers anything below 1 nanometer is true solution above 100 nanometers are suspensions below 1 to 100 is colloidal solutions is it a homogeneous no it is a heterogeneous system with two phases and solute like particles are called dispersed phase like your solute in your solution solvent like particles are called dispersion medium like solvent in your solution so solute like particles are dispersed phase dp solvent like particles are dispersion medium dm example starch solution muddy water ice cream etc these all comes under this case now differences between lyophilic and lyophobic basic differences you can see in one slide what is the basic one lyo means solvent philic means affinity so if you have affinity high affinity between dp and dm they love each other then it is philic they hate each other no affinity or least affinity sorry they are dispersed phase and dispersion medium no affinity between them so lyophobic who attract each other who have attractions between them they are stable who hate each other they are unstable lyophilic is reversible you can prepare you can again coagulate but it's difficult but still you can coagulate again prepare it directly but you cannot do both the ways irreversible is lyophobic cannot be easily coagulated since they are stable so the point corresponds to that is this this point corresponds to this if you say it can be easily coagulated yes viscosity is more than dispersed dispersion medium viscosity is same as dispersion medium surface tension is less than the dispersion medium is same as that of the dispersion medium some of the important points to be noted for the example and uh, the best way to remember lyophilic souls are organic compounds lyophobic souls are inorganic compounds just one way to remember easy way to understand okay collides the classifications of collides can be done with respect to the dispersion phase and dispersion medium the physical states one with in your textbook you will be learning a tabular form please go through the tabular form in the textbook different different uh, we have eight combinations classifications of dispersed phase and dispersion medium here we are classifying based on the size of the particle size of the dispersed phase we are classifying them into three types multi molecular collides i will say simple one you convert a very small size of molecules into a colloidal range particles this can be possible if these are inorganic compounds anything which is related to inorganic chemistry those all comes under multi molecular collides very easy so sulfides you say hydroxides you say gold soul silver soul it is an inorganic then it is multi molecular anything from biomolecules in your organic chemistry biomolecules which is already of colloidal range no need to convert it it is already a colloidal range so these all comes under so carbohydrates are biomolecules all your biomolecules comes under this category of macromolecular collides which is in between these two the size is small but it has to be converted into a colloidal range so by association or aggregation association or aggregation 
which leads to the formation of micell which leads to the formation of micelles those are coming under the category of associated collides so all those sodium or potassium salts of fatty acids those all comes under the category of associated collides what is important in associated collides they form true solutions at low concentration true solution at low concentration this is going to be the first point and collides at high concentrations collides at critical micelle concentration cmc that is the major key point to be understood in this preparation of collides can be done in different ways chemical methods in this we have a double decomposition double decomposition method hydrolysis method double decomposition hydrolysis you have oxidation you have reduction four different ways we'll be getting the products double decomposition will generally prepare as2 s3 hydrolysis will go with feoh thrice preparations such type of reactions most commonly asked in the examinations chemical methods are employed in those cases electrical dispersion method bredig's arc method this method is used to prepare metal salts like gold sole or silver sole used to prepare gold sole or silver sole in this which is mentioned condensation and dispersion both are involved in the dispersion method that is the very important principle peptidization meaning conversion of fresh precipitate suspension sized particles fresh precipitate into colloidal solution by adding a suitable electrolyte and that electrolyte should have a common ion should have a common ion with respect to precipitate then that is called as peptizing agent this common ion containing this particular electrolyte is called peptizing agent peptizing agent so what is the role of peptization is to convert fresh precipitate into colloidal solution purification can be done in three ways dialysis you will be having a dialysis membrane over here you will have a colloidal solution inside colloidal solution is taken with all the true particles has impurities along with this your water is being taken here so the water enters as a solvent into the membrane but when water is coming out it will be coming with the true particles so it comes out as solution this is the basic logic so water enters into the membrane dialysis membrane as solvent comes out as solution that is the principle involved in dialysis process electrodialysis if the same principle is carried out in presence of electric field and electric field then the same principle that dialysis is called electrodialysis which increases the speed of the process ultra filtration conversion of filter paper into ultra filter paper filter paper is converted into ultra filter paper so by taking in a colloidal solution immerse in a colloidal solution then the whole size will be decreased which can only allow true particles to pass through but not the colloidal particles so colloidal solution containing on that coming to the colligative properties of this particular one they they are larger size when compared to true particles so their colloidal properties colligative properties are very low when compared to true solutions tyndall effect the phenomena of scattering of incident light by colloidal particles is tyndall effect remember this is the unique property to identify true solution from colloidal solution if you have to identify colloidal solution use this as a principle now this can be exam furthermore can be taken in terms of color depending on the size of the colloidal particles the wavelength of light scattered will be changing depending on the wavelength of the light scattered the color of the substance can be different so we can identify the colors which is varying with respect to wavelength in turn varying with respect to size of the particles when colloidal solutions are viewed under microscope zigzag movement is been observed by the brownian robert brown is a scientist and so this is named as brownian movement which is ultimately responsible for stability of colloidal solutions zeta potential if you have colloidal particles each particle have some charge it is surrounded by the negative charge from the solvent on both the sides this separation of charges leads to a potential across the double helical layer and that potential is called zeta potential or electrokinetic potential electrophoresis the movement of colloidal particles when they place when you have a positive charged species when you place in the electric field these particles will move towards the 
negative plate of the electric field so the oppositely charged electric plate they move towards the opposite charged electric plate when placed in an electric field and this phenomena is called electrophoresis this is indicating the charge processed by the particles coagulation the process of conversion of colloidal particles into suspensions is called as coagulation and that if i am taking this particular one coagulation hard disk skulls rule this is very important higher the charge on the precipitating ion greater its coagulating power and that can be observed in simple way if your charged particle is negative then the coagulation can happen very easily by this order so plus 3 can coagulate more faster than plus 2 than plus 1 same way if you have positive charged solution coagulation can happen with the minus 4 Minus three, minus two, minus one. So that will be happening in that way with respect to the particles. Moving to the very important point: coagulating value or fluctuating value. Number of millimoles. Please understand. This is very important. Number of millimoles required to be added to one liter of colloidal solution. So the units is very important. The questions mostly comes on that. Number of millimoles of electrolyte required to add one liter of colloidal solution in order to bring coagulation. It is called fluctuating value. Always remember, value is inversely proportional to power. If I say coagulating value inversely proportional to coagulating power, fluctuating value inversely proportional to fluctuating power. Emulsions. The last concept. Colloidal systems are classified into emulsions. If you have liquid in liquid type of colloidal solutions liquid dispersed phase and liquid dispersion medium there are two types water in oil oil in water so these are the two different types of this that means water is the dispersed phase oil will be dispersion medium here water will be dispersion medium where oil is dispersed phase generally these uh, emulsions are unstable so to stabilize these emulsions we need a substance who can stabilize these emulsions those are called emulsifying agents examples of those are proteins gums naturals and synthetic soaps so this is the role of emulsifying agents and this is our uh, topic of surface chemistry i hope i have covered all the important concepts brushed up all the important areas in the lessons in very small time i hope you have understood this one do well all the best thank you